Hi everyone, my name is Phil and I'm with PEMI Consulting. Today I will be covering the last module in our API 2000 webinar where I perform a demonstration of a tool that calculates automatically the venting requirements that was developed internally here in PEMI Consulting. So here is our API 2000 calculator opened in Excel. Now before I go through the actual individual inputs and the different tabs, I want to just go over an overview of how this spreadsheet works. So as you can see here, there these different cells are color-coded. Uh, there are green cells, yellow cells, and blue cells. Green cells are for input values, so these are where you actually input the number or the parameter that you need. The yellow cells are units. Um, our spreadsheet is actually able to account for a variety of units and so they can actually automatically do the unit conversion for you. Lastly, blue cells are cells that um, are the results. And so these are values that you shouldn't change. They'll automatically be calculated in Excel and you can actually just see the result. Um, the flow of the spreadsheet is that you input all your inputs that you necessary here in the inputs tabs as well as the next tab the geometry calculator and then from there in your last three tabs you can actually just see the final results so let's just dive right in in the inputs tab we see in the beginning there's tank information this is just for the general information about your specific tank that you want to keep track of uh, you know who which company is it for um, where is it located the tank number the product etc uh, this is just to keep track so that you can have different spreadsheets for different takes and know what's exactly in it. So I'm going to go ahead and skip on, go on to uh, the next section which is general inputs. And so in the beginning you need to know the tank volume. And so we can actually calculate the tank volume for you by either going to the geometry ta calculator tab right here. Or you can click on this link tank volume and it will actually bring you to that next tab, geometry calculator. Here we consider different types of vessels. Um, most tanks that we're considering are vertical tanks. However, it does have the potential to be able to consider spheres or horizontal tanks as well. But for now, I will just consider vertical tanks. <clears throat> Let's assume for our demonstration a diameter of 50 feet and a height of 24 feet. As you can see, uh, these blue cells are the results and they automatically populated as I inputted these values here. For the units, you can actually specify different units here. So if I want to go metric, I can specify meters or centimeters or even millimeters. Or I can specify whatever units that uh, is convenient for you. <clears throat> um, for the results, we see here it automatically calculates your volume, volume, your total surface area, as well as your insulated surface area. Uh, for volume, you can see, since it's a result tab, you can actually just see um, if it's you want it in different units, like cubic meters, it automatically change the result to, to the value uh, that's calculated in cubic meters. I'll keep it for bar at barrels for now. For insulated surface area, a quick note about this is that we assumed uh, that only the shell was insulated, but not the bottom, nor the roof. This is a very standard assumption, uh, and so this is the corresponding surface area that's associated with that. So now going back to the inputs tab. Uh, let's see the other inputs that's necessary. We have the max incoming delivery rate, which is how much uh, liquid is coming, uh, pumping, pumped uh, into the tank, and likewise how much uh, liquid is coming out of the tank. For these, let's assume uh, 200 barrels per hour for each. Um, this is obviously dependent on your nozzles and how much you're actually coming into and out of the tank. For design pressure, let's assume a design pressure of one inch of water column. Um, this is also dependent on what uh, you know what is the design requirements for your tank now for these next sections they are uh, for specific sections or uh, results that you're looking for so you can actually operate them independently if you only want to consider analyzing an annex A you really only need to fill out this section uh, for normal in and out breathing you can fill out this section and for emergency this section uh, insulation properties, uh, this is actually bounded to both normal in and out breathing as well as emergency venting. Meaning that if you want to actually consider insulation properties, you need to include uh, the sections here as well. 
Uh, so I'll just go down the list of inputs. So let's say I want to consider all three, you know, the Annex A calculation, the normal and out breathing calculation, and the emergency venting calculations. Uh, uh, go through all these sections. So here you can specify your temperature, either the flash point temperature or the boiling point temperature. You do not need both, you just need one or the other. Uh, it will take the flash point as precedence, so if you do include both, it will only take the flash point into consideration. For now, let's assume uh, that our product has a flash point of 100 Fahrenheit, uh, but once again, this depends on your product. For normal in and out breeding, uh, we have here three inputs. The latitude depends on the location of the tank, and so uh, you can actually just look it up. Uh, if you're not fully sure, you can also also use Google Maps. It's a good resources resource to actually determine what the actual latitude is for your site or for your tank. The vapor pressure of the product depends on the product. Here we assume uh, 70 inches water column, uh, which I believe is what it is for gasoline, um, which is something very typical or standard. And let's also assume that it's, uh, it's stored in an area that's around 70 Fahrenheit. Um, these are all default, default, but once again, it should change depending on the actual values for your tank. Uh, let's actually consider insulation. Uh, this is not something that's required, but this is something. Uh, but let's say our tank is insulated, and we actually want to use the credit gain from that. And so uh, these values are values that are provided. Um, they are kind of default values, but if you actually know specifically what kind of insulation you have, you can actually look up these different parameters. Um, but these are kind of given in API 2000, and so these are what I'm going to list. Uh, for now and keep as well as for the heat transfer coefficient as well as for the thermal conductivity insulation. For the wall thickness, it depends on how much insulation you have. Let's assume we have around two inches of insulation. Uh, that's really typical for tanks of this size. Uh, the insulation conduction the conductance is a parameter that gets used uh, for your emergency venting. And so uh, for that, uh, we, we assumed a typical value for a two inch insulation of two uh, BTU per uh, HF feet squared uh, Fahrenheit. Now for uh, the tank surface area, these were already calculated in your geometry calculator, but if you want to calculate them here, once again, they have these links where you can click and it will bring you to the geometry calculator. Um, double wall tank will assume for now that the tank is not double walled, but remember that in the API 2000, they have a provision where if the tank has a second wall, uh, you can actually consider that uh, kind of a form of insulation and so you can actually calculate this you would have to calculate yourself uh, how much of the wall area of the wall is not inside that containment tank and so from there they will calculate you can calculate uh, how much uh, credit you can gain from that wall for now we'll just assume that it's regularly insulated uh, which is a, a layer of insulation on the shell and that it's not a double wall tank for emergency venting, we need to find this wetted surface area. For here, I'm going to click this and it will go back once again to this geometry calculator tab. And it will, uh, for here, I'll see, show you the wetted surface area. The, the wetted surface area is the amount of area that's actually you know, exposed to the fire. or um, And so it depends on whether the tank is actually above grade or not. If it's actually elevated, the tank is elevated, then actually uh, some of the bottom of the tank can actually be exposed to the fire and actually affects the heat flow and the calculations for emergency venting. And so here let's assume that our tank is just sitting on the ground. Um, it's not actually elevated at all. But if it were, you can actually just change this to true and actually estimate how much of the tank bottom is actually exposed to the fire. This value is actually purely determined by engineering judgment. And so you need to basically, based on experience and how much you think would actually be exposed, you need to, as a user, determine for yourself how much of this uh, value, uh, how much percent of the bottom is actually exposed to the fire. So for now, we assume it's zero or nothing because the tank is sitting on the ground. Uh, and let's go back to our inputs tab. Uh, these are parameters for your product. Um, we're, right now, we're assuming a product similar to hexane. Uh, which is why we're using the default parameters that are used in API 2000 uh, for these different values, the latent heat of vaporization, the temperature, and the relative molecular mass. Uh, the temperature is the absolute temperature, which is usually taken as the bubble point. One quick note, a difference between a bubble point and a boiling point is that for mixtures, uh, there is no one set uh, boiling point. Uh, it's really a range. And so the bubble point is the boiling point 
when the first bubble appears or the, the lowest point of that range. For the ticket design slash configuration, this is for that F or environmental factor that we found in emergency venting. Uh, I will assume that the tank is insulated, um, which is listed here. Um, we can actually consider these uh, independent, so you can actually analyze the tank assuming it's bare uh, metal for emergency venting, but include insulation for normal in and out breeding. This is a feature up to you, but we will, in our demonstration here, actually consider the tank to be insulated for the emergency venting calculations. From there, we can now actually go to these individual tabs and actually see the results. So I will begin with the normal in and out breathing. Here we see um, the uh, the different flow of the actual calculations that were done. Um, in this column, we see out breathing. In this column, we see in breathing. We see the section for liquid movement and the section for thermal, and then the total, which is the sum of the two. Uh, it, we I actually listed in this particular tab the actual equations associated, so you can actually track and follow along and see where the calculations are going through. Uh, for now, for the incoming flow rate, once again, it's just a unit conversion, a uh, direct one-to-one -one ratio of the flow rate, uh, doubling if it's uh, a volatile liquid. In our case, we assumed it was volatile, uh, and so if you actually look at the barrels per hour, the, the same units, um, you can see that it doubles um, the incoming flow rate and the outgoing flow rate is doubled because it's volatile. Um, but once again, yeah, we just, since these are all results, uh, you don't actually need to change or input anything. These, they were all inputted in the input tab. You can change the units to see the results in a different unit that you want. So if you want it to be in the cubic feet per hour, you can calculate and see how much it is there. Um, for the thermal, once again, we see I also listed uh, these tables to show where these values came from. And so you can actually double check the calculations if you desired, but you see uh, you know, where these Y factor is, the volume of the tank, which once again, you can determine um, the diff change of different units as, as desired. The insulation factor, um, so the reduction factor from the insulation, uh, I show the, the calculations here, or uh, the reduction factor uh, with the corresponding uh, equations. Uh, this is not used because this was again for the double watt tanks uh, where the secondary containment is, can be considered insulation. But here we see uh, the actual effects. So these are the inputs that we um, listed earlier <coughs> uh, along with the corresponding variables so you can actually map them. And then here we find the actual corresponding uh, area, surface area, the total surface area, and then from there you can find the ratio based on the equation. Uh, to determine uh, what's the insulation reduction factor, which here is 0 0.47. So you actually only need, uh, so this is actually a significant saving, so if the tank is insulated, it does actually reduce your thermal by more than half uh, for these typical values, um, the flow rate. And so this is the flow rate that's calculated here. Uh, I left them in standard cubic feet per hour. Um, and so these are calculated based on these equations that are listed above. And then these are values that are just the sum of these two above. So the total flow rate uh, outbreeding necessary and the total inbreeding necessary uh, are calculated here. Down below, I have these additional calculations for uh, nozzle sizing. Uh, this is actually listed in each of these tabs um, where based on NFPA, uh, we have in this calculator um, how much flow rate uh, and then we have this equation which depends on the design pressure and the uh, the area needed uh, of your nozzle and uh, this coefficient, this flow coefficient. Typically uh, the flow coefficient is around uh, 0 0.65 but to be conservative and to require a higher area uh, we actually use 0 0.5 uh, to be conservative and so essentially in order to find the area of the nozzle that's necessary we uh, divide the flow rates, these flow rates above here um, that we calculated um, by these values and to determine uh, how much area of your orifice or your nozzle that's actually necessary to um, alleviate these uh, requirements. And so these vent sizing requirements are here. So this is the minimum area uh, as calculated from the above equation in square inches. Um, here we see the inbreeding is significantly higher than the outbreeding. And then uh, if this is a single, obviously you can use multiple vents 
to alleviate and so the total sum of these vents can uh, add to this area but if you're only using one as the size uh, of the vent or that you need to alleviate uh, each of these individual requirements the outbreeding as well as the inbreeding requirements the approximate diameter of that vent that's necessary these are all approximations um, but once again we are cons we were conservative in our ap approach and so we consider this to be um, uh, pretty accurate so that's the main body or normal in and out breeding uh, which is based on chapter 3 of API 2000 next I'll cover emergency venting tab uh, once again it's only really one parameter that, that gets looked at uh, which is the flow rate that's required and so uh, these are the equations um, I didn't list out uh, everything as I did in the normal in and out breeding but you can follow the equations and based on the inputs that you listed in your inputs tab it'll automatically calculate this value for you and once again you can change the units as desired um, here we also see the same calculations for the flow, the venting size. Uh, so based on the uh, amount of heat flow, <laughs> it's the same amount of flow that's necessary to be alleviated. And so you need a corresponding emergency vent of that size and with the same area or volume. Um, and then here, uh, the the environmental factor F is already built in into the calculations. I listed all the corresponding tables uh, that are listed in the normal uh, in the uh, API 2000. So uh, if you want, you can uh, double check the work um, uh, without actually opening your doc. They're all listed right here. Um, but we've we've done it, and we're we're pretty sure this is right. Lastly, for Annex A, uh, it, it's once again just showing the results of the calculations. Um, so we have your your flow rate based on liquid uh, outbreeding or liquid inbreeding. We have your thermal, and we have the total, which is the sum of the two. Um, we have here that the these tables, uh, which is what we use to actually uh, determine the values of these um, these parameters, um, and and so this is also just as used so you can actually uh, double check your work if necessary and then we have likewise the same calculation to determine the flow rate necessary between these two and so here you see if you want to compare the differences between the Annex A and normal in and out breeding you can compare the two uh, sizes that are required and so um, here you need a 3 inch vent for outbreeding and a over five maybe six inch vent for uh, inbreeding whereas annex a you would need a slightly larger than a three inch vent and then also a three inch here for here and so in this case we see that the normal in and out breeding is uh, extra conservative um, uh, but that's just to account for the these, these possible cases with the vapor uh, vapor generation and so that's uh, it. That's an overview of the calculator, um, and everything kind of works automatically. Uh, you can change these inputs however you want, depending on uh, what inputs you're given, uh, what unit system you want to deal with, whether it be metric or English, and you can just record the results likewise. The last thing I want to show is that um, you can actually, when you print uh, these docs, uh, I'll actually just show you the page layout is that they're formatted in such a way that when you print it, uh, it will actually print them uh, in, a, in a very nice and organized way. So everything's already organized in its own separate tab so that when you print them as pages, uh, they should already actually be uh, in a, a format that's very readable um, so that you can actually just uh, calculate it and then print it from the Excel and it'll actually just print everything uh, in a way that is neat and organized and so you can have it in a sense, an instant report uh, for your different calculations. And so that's it for uh, my demonstration uh, of uh, this spreadsheet. This ends this particular module, the demonstration, as well as our entire webinar. Uh, if you have any questions or concerns uh, regarding any of the material that was covered, uh, feel free to ask. Uh, otherwise, uh, please continue to uh, use the lessons learned here about API 2000 in your work.